All right. Hello, my name is Kara McGrain. I want to welcome you to another edition of Autism Lifeline Links Across the Spectrum Facebook Live. So we are so excited to be here today to take a little twist on what we usually do. We're usually high information, um, dispelling some myths and rumors, trying to help people understand systems of care better. And we really love to do that. We love doing that. And we love having all of our uh, stakeholders in San Antonio, Texas, and in and around San Antonio to work with us on that. But in the midst of COVID, we all have been very fatigued um, about so much pressure, about getting things done, making sure we're providing services the best that we can, um, helping families manage through some of this chaos and crisis, and trying to find the best way to get um, services to people via telehealth or via um, you know, Zoom or Google Classrooms or things like that. And so what we really started to talk about was, oh my God, I have this guy in my program and he did this amazing piece, he did a TikTok, right? Or he did a, you know, came up with a song or learned how to do something. Um, and it made us start to think like, well, part of what we're supposed to do with Autism Lifeline Links is celebrate people with autism and intellectual and developmental disabilities. And I think we all kind of forget sometimes that that's what we're here to do as well. So we decided to, um, to do this today call celebration stories and just really share some great art and some stories about the great work that our our guys as i like to say uh, are doing and we really are focusing on the older population at this point point. and so today i have with me miss cindy boynton and she's with sa life academy and of course melissa cornelius fry who's from the nelly reddick center in Northside independent school district here in san antonio and Melissa has a baby with her, so she's on mute until we talk with her. So if we have a little delay, we are happy for it because she's cuddling. Um, and then we also have contributing art from our amazing friends at Arc of San Antonio and beautiful, beautiful pictures and some great stories and some family accomplishments and points of pride uh, from our friends at Team Ability. And the Team Ability, we'll talk about them when we get to some of their stories and some of their pictures. Um, but you know, all of us are struggling and we also sometimes have to think, what are families challenged by every family, even if they have neurotypical children, but when you have a kiddo that's on the spectrum or a loved one, a young adult who's on the spectrum or with an intellectual or developmental disability or a physical disability, it's just so much harder right now. So um, in addition to some great kid stuff and some great youth uh, and young adult and self-advocate stuff, we wanted to hear from some families too. So Team Ability did a beautiful job of getting some of those um, family, family strengthening stories, I think I'd like to say. So um, we're excited. And this, uh, of course, was, uh, will be Friday the, what is Friday, the 15th? Um, Friday the 19th of June here in San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> um, I also want to just quickly um, share with you all um, Autism Lifeline links. Uh, for those of you who tuned in over the time with us, we are a collective impact project here in San Antonio, Texas. Excuse my emails. That's not what I wanted to show you. Um, and we are here to try to um, eliminate barriers of, and break down silos between agencies who are caring for people with autism and intellectual disabilities. So these are our Autism Lifeline Links electronic referral partners. Um, and what we do is share information and register families in these electronic in, in an electronic platform so that um, we can share referrals but we have millions of not millions but i like to say millions but hundreds of other stakeholders like people at sa life academy team ability and at the at the nelly reddick center who are contributing to our work groups and can continuing to contribute to create systems change here in san antonio texas so if you're interested in our program please go to um, autismlifelinelinks.org and if you are someone who's on the spectrum or you have a loved one who's on the spectrum in the San Antonio um, Bear, Greater Bear area, please go online and register with us so we can start to connect you with other agencies and services and start to find out where the gaps are. So I'm going to, without any further ado, start our slideshow. So we started this with, um, yeah through this great team. So I'm going to let Cindy, and you can see Cindy's smiling face at this <laughs> point. Um, and you guys can see my screen, correct? Right. We yep. got it. So yes. we're going to move our lovely faces right yes. here. 
So Kimberly and Mallory, yeah. and uh, we have at SA Life Academy, we have a, um, a retired art teacher that we've had for three years. And she does phenomenal work. It's just not, you know, coloring, but she really brings out the best in, in, in the adults by by showing them how to how to be creative and 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 do it themselves. That's amazing. They do it themselves. But she has this technique that I can't even. I'm not very artistic, so. Um, but she has a fantastic um, technique that she really does with the in with the adults, and their product is beautiful. And they just feel so proud and. Um, at our fundraiser, we sold a lot of them. I mean, I mean, they're really, if they're really good and it's amazing because I just don't get that opportunity to shine like that. Like, you know, the, there's some really talented people and um, it's fun to watch that. And, you know, it's so great because Cindy and Melissa and everybody out there, so often we don't, we, because we don't think the community, the communication may not be high in the population that we sometimes think, well, if they don't understand the instruction link, but they can understand on a completely different yeah. level and or also doing a visual representation or doing those things. Everybody's a different learner, even anyone that is considered neurotypical. Some of us are very, you know, touch and visual, visual. And so no different for our population. And so find what, um, find that way for them to be able to express themselves is very, very exciting. And this is beautiful work. And I love the abstract nature of the, of Miss Kimberly's work here. It almost looks like a, is it a watercolor? It looks like it, yeah. That was, I can't remember, she, um, Kimberly and Mallory are one of our first um, people to be in uh, three years ago to start. So uh, it looks like a watercolor on that one. And that Mallory's is, is just paint or, you know, whatever. Harvest. Yeah. Looking for that harvest moon. It's yeah. a few more months for us in Texas, but I, I look forward to that, to yeah. that harvest moon, that pumpkin, I'll tell you. Okay, tell me about this beautiful piece. Oh. Elena, our teacher, she had them, this was our first class, and uh, Armada's doing live together, and we fit together, and she had them, each of them, kind of draw themselves, which, I mean, if you look at that closely, I mean, you don't know the students, but it's amazing how much they really do look like they're drawing. Yeah. So they just, and so she made it into a puzzle and had it all come together as, as, as one, which I thought was great. Okay. And those are rocks that we did at the beginning, too. Um, they painted the rocks, they put an inspiration on the back and they went in the city and put them places and said, if you find this rock, you know, go take it to someone, you know, another place. And it just kind of, you know, and on, on Facebook, we would get stuff like, oh, we found your rock and that kind of thing. It was really cool. It was really okay. fun. Uh, Cindy, I'm going to stop you. I've done something, Facebook world, forgive me. I've done something I didn't mean to do. Oh, okay. And I didn't mean for Cindy to have to move that fast through things. Oh, it's okay. I I thought I was, uh, Melissa, thank you for laughing at me. Like anybody can help me out there in the world, what I'm trying to do here. I was just trying to show the screen without everything else. Okay, so this, yeah, yeah self-portrait. Yeah. So Cindy's like, well, you don't know, we don't, we don't know out in the world what, our, what her guys look like. Yeah. But these are excellent representations is what you're telling us. I think so. And they, you know, they chose their colors and, um, you know, they, and, and, and it just was just a fun project for them. And um, we still have it hanging in our classroom, so. It's a special okay. one for, to us. Okay, I'm loving Joey's uh, Cool Man shades right here. Uh huh. Like, uh huh. He's just yeah. so bright. Joey's got to wear shades in his suit. <laughs> that is a that is a Stone Temple Pilot song right there. If I ever heard. Right. It. It's I guess so that, right? I don't know how they how they do themselves. You know, it's 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 really cute. I I think this is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. They did a great job, and I think, like I said before, Elaine just has a technique that she doesn't do it for them, but she'll, she, she'll do it like, okay, you have the top corner, do this or whatever, you know, she explains it to them and the processing slower possibly with a lot of them, but, but it just takes time and, and they, and they do it, you know, a little bit more time and that's all there is. And, and then they produce stuff like this. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now I'm super curious about this. So we have Avery and the world should know. I have one of these, yes. I don't know if it's Avery's, I'll have to check the back of it. Um, that the team at the Life yeah. Academy gave me. So it's right over there. You can't see it from here, yeah. but uh, excited and very proud to have one of those. All those, all guys. the students did one, and it's I believe it, if I'm not mistaken, it was like they did sponges on a lot of them, and that's what she would do because you know sponging is really easy. So you go okay, this half so of the canvas, right? You take don't a get sponge and like I think, I think yeah, they just sponge and stuff like that, and I'm not sure about the cactus, but. 
I think the background sponging and smoothing and all that, but a lot of them, they all did it and, um, and, and are very proud. As you can see, Avery, a big smile on her face. I love it. Can you please tell me, Michael, in his <laughs> handsome gingerness right here, yeah. is, that a, is that a Bucknell t-shirt? Um, I, I, think can't, I think so. I think that's Bucknell. That's an excellent Yeah, story. yeah. Excellent story. That's so funny, um, yeah. That, tell, me Michael's, tell me about Michael's, like, I don't know, is this a ninja? Is this a, what do we it's got? Like in a, and I, yeah, it's like a, a, what do you call that? Where they take paper and, 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 uh, and glue and make something and, and then paper they, mache. yeah, uh, yeah, paper mache and each of them kind of did a different look and then they painted it or, um, it's just good, I mean, just good hand and eye hand coordination and just being creative, you know, and, um, they all did a fantastic job. I just, I just love that. You should have seen them all in our room, all lined up. It was really great. I wish I would have taken a picture of that. I, can imagine. <laughs> I mean, this, this really, I think about um, if you've ever been to like Disney or watched any of those shows like Imagineers and you know, how they, how they create things. And then right. they turn that into the template for the drawing and how they move around in that. Right. Right. Okay. I'm going to hop around a minute and I'm going to go down here to, um, I want to share like a family story. So our friends at Team Ability. So I'm actually going to share this first. So this is Mr. Ryan right here. You can see Mr. Ryan. He's um, in a lot of the guys that go to Team Ability are, um, they really are most physically complex um, children and um, young adults in our community. Generally have cerebral palsy or spinal injury or um, they, they often combine to wheelchairs. And so getting them out of their chairs, getting them moving and having these spaces. And if you've never been to Team Ability, it's just like Netretics and just like SA Life Academy, these wonderful places. But the team at Team Ability, um, it was actually started by two special education teachers that came out of Harlandale Independent School District. They worked at the, what was back then the MHC, the Multi Handicap Center. And I show, I have a big smile because um, I, I have, I've known them and known of them since since I've been in Texas. And so let's just say they started Team Ability and you go over them. What they do on the budget that they have is miraculous, especially they have that teacher instinct to take, you know, empty water bottles and turn them into therapeutic toys. And they, mm -hmm. they do so much of this amazing creativity. And I think that that's really remarkable for a number of reasons, um, because it also lets families know that you don't have to have the million dollar piece of equipment in order to engage or stimulate or do anything special with your kiddo. And I see you both nodding because that can be super intimidating. We can all walk into places and I can name a few that they're doing great work, but oh, the equipment and the budget. And I know we all three of us know what buying some of that equipment costs and that can be intimidating, right? It's like, how am I gonna do this at home? And so Team Ability has always, since its inception, been insanely resourceful and pragmatic about how they approach the tools with which they that, that they use and engage their clients and then teaching that to families so you can see this is ryan he's getting his ot session and so we want to talk for a moment about telehealth and because in the covid space telehealth whether it's for occupational therapy or speech therapy um, obviously many people have done it with their practitioners their medical practitioners and their um, psychiatric or psychological professors and uh, professionals not professors sorry um, and so this is Ryan getting OT and you can see at home, he's got all sorts of the Jumbo balls and down here, you can see mom uh, with the pink shirt, probably who's doing some of his intervention. But my favorite part about this is Ryan probably doesn't have a ton of mobility, but what can Ryan give us? Ryan can give us a ton of mobility. And that says a lot um, and team at team ability has always been really great that even if it's just that finger or that thumb or that one little motion that they can have, it is imperative that we maintain that for them so they can have whatever independence or whatever communication this might provide. So kudos to them. I'm gonna show you too, um, uh, Barbara and the team at Team Ability got us some quotes. So this is Ryan's mom and this is Ryan right here, right? Um, that, you know, I, I'm gonna make an assumption. I don't know Ryan, but he probably doesn't have high communication skills. But what Ryan's mom has learned in this period is that he can become sad and smiling like frowny face, right? Like he can be sad or depressed because what he, just like all of us, we miss our family. We miss our friends. We miss going out. We miss socializing. I miss soccer. I play in a women's soccer league. I miss that so bad. And, but I have the ability to know that this too shall pass. 
But what they did is when they were able to, and this wasn't right at the beginning of COVID for the world to know, it took a little time for teletherapy to get approved. So in that time, Ryan got a little sad, but I'll tell you what, when tele teletherapy happened, it was wonderful for, mom reports is wonderful for his depression, that the team ability team gave um, mom, Ryan's mom strategies for activities, but also ways to make the activities more meaningful to Ryan. And although he's still sad because he misses his routine and he misses his socialization, um, she feels he's a little more like himself. And that is just a beautiful thing to hear and know. And we talk about it all the time, but our guys that have disabilities are absolutely no different than us neurotypicals out in the world. We have more sadness, we have more depression, we have more isolation. And just because he can't go out and, you know, run a marathon and do a big party doesn't mean that he isn't also sad. And so let's always remember that as we move through this. And then Alex's mom um, said that he's really missed out on the interactions of being with his therapist and the other kids, because it's a small place and it's busy. There's all sorts of guys around and all sorts of great noises and stimulation. Um, but they feel that they've missed out on some of that, especially his vision skills um, during his therapy, but they have learned how to be creative. So kind of what I said before about the example that Team Ability sets, that how they've learned to be creative and come up with ideas for doing therapy at home and making the activities on their own. Um, and one of our Facebook Lives coming up is gonna be that, like how we're from one of the school districts, uh, how to try to find the stuff around your house and make it into things that can be part of activity. So um, like the mom made a light box for him um, and she's saying she's not at all creative. So thank you to <laughs> Ryan and Alex's, Al Alex's, Al Alex's moms for sharing those great stories and sharing these images of your of your adorable, wonderful, resilient children, and of course, to the team ability team. Here's just another adorable picture um, about therapy happening. You can see that doesn't look like a happy kid right there, right? Isn't that exciting? So even though they can't see her um, in person, of course, that's always a tough one. <laughs> Connect four, that's good stuff. All right, so now I'm gonna go to Melissa. Are we good? Can I put you on, on sound? Yes, okay, excellent. <laughs> So um, the team at Nellie Reddick's, again, um, if you don't know, the Nellie Reddick Center is, how would you describe it? Like the, I don't want to um, Transition program for Northside ISD. And then we also house um, our students that have higher medical needs than can be met on a general ed campus. Thank you. I mean, I remember when this place first opened and it's up near the medical center. It is a beautiful campus and they've got a pool and they got all the like therapy and all this kind of wonderful stuff happening there. And it's great. I personally love going there because you have guys who have, who need tons of intervention medically and physically. And then you have these transition age guys, some of whom like they've got a lot of them have jobs and they're riding the via and they have these great swaths of independence. And it's a reminder to all of us that again, just like us neurotypicals and just like any other high school in America, you go in and the range of kids is broad and the range of kids at Reddix is just as broad, all with a little qualifier. And so I'm going to have, so Sarah's story. Do I have a picture to go with Sarah? I think just that's like me. two slides down. Okay. Sorry, we, uh, okay. is yeah, this Sarah it's right there. So, <laughs> Tell us um, about Sarah. A lot of our young adults, when the quarantine started, um, they were feeling really disconnected. You know, it was hard for them um, not seeing their friends every day, and um, it, it was stressful, and a lot of them were getting kind of sad. And so um, we started online learning, and we were doing a lot of Google Meets and Zoom. And so Sarah and um, her family came up with the idea to do a little movie night for Sarah's friends. And so um, they have it set up with a schedule. So everybody jumps on about 6.15 and they have 15 minutes to say hi to every, you know, to all their friends, yeah. talk about what's going on. They'll watch the movie for a little bit and then they take a break um, and everybody gets unmuted and they can chit chat some more. And so it's just a fun way for them a to- A little intermission. A little uh, intermission, It does have an right? intermission. I and love so, it. The, um, they're continuing to do that. It, it went so well, they've continued to do that through the summer. So, um, and they keep inviting, like first it was just her class and then it was, okay, we'll invite the class next door. And then now it's um, 
pretty much everybody on campus that the <laughs> family invites to it. So it's fun because the young adults get on there, some of the staff will get on. Um, and so everybody gets to see each other. It's just a fun way for them to hang out since they can't physically hang out together. Yeah. I literally have goosebumps right now because you think about, again, like how many families are doing this, mm -hmm. getting together for meal times or for movies or we're doing, my son's graduating or has graduated from high school. And so my family's, I mean, not only our family here in town, but in Boston and California and New York and Rhode Island, like, so doing this kind of thing, it's really wonderful because it, the celebrations and the fellowship doesn't stop. Yeah. Um, but taking a little extra time to be creative and mm -hmm. kudos to Sarah's parents, right? <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, like, you know, I, I uh, had another call with one of our other partner agencies, Any Baby Can, the other day, and, um, you know, so much of the conversation was all of the ways that we are, especially as parents, sometimes feeling inadequate during all this, because we can't, the work and the school and the worry, right, about health or well-being or the future, um, it's, it's a challenge, and I think what's a great equalizer in all this is that everybody is in that space now and some people have extraordinary additional things going on like a child that maybe has a disability or an elderly um, parent or a, a spouse with a brain injury i mean these things make that make the situation that 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 makes this even more complex so everybody just cut themselves some slack right we always say cut yourself some slack um, and these these things that are not highly complex, but they're they're super wonderful and celebrate that Sarah's mom and dad and friends and anybody that goes on it because you're making everybody that goes on that's making everything better for everybody else too, right? It's fellowship, which is a whole lot of fun, that's for sure. All our teachers at SA Life Academy, they um, did Zoom three times a week and one was social, one was workout, and then we had the art teacher have us have an hour um, thing on for art, and we would send um, send the families, you know, packages, you know, from emails, and they, you know, copied off. And so there was still a lot of, you know, kind of not learning going on and communication. But um, I think it was interesting. I had one one mom say that it kind of helped, like, teach my adult time and what's coming yeah. next, and. Oh, so yeah. there were some positive things, you know, about the Zooms and stuff too, you know. It really helps them can feel connected. Mm -hmm. I'm sure y'all saw that too, because that was a lot of the um, stress about what was going on is they yeah. felt so disconnected. So right. it was really such an awesome way to do that. You know, and, and to that point, Cindy as well, I didn't think about this until you said it, right? But when they go to school for Melissa or they go to, to SA Life with, with Cindy and their teens, like the time management things, like they're, they're in school, they're at SA Life. So they know a schedule, but almost on the next, like not almost, but definitely like next level. Mm -hmm. they're, and they're not with you physically. They're not with either of you or any place physically, except for at home, but they still have to do some sort of time management and know that even though we're at home, things come next. Like it's, I, wow, that's like nice abstract scheduling, right? And exactly. And I, I mean, and, and we started back June 8th and, I, and I've just been so impressed with our adults on accepting the situation, masks and social distancing. And I mean, they have been exceptional. I, I have to admit, I was a little worried at first thinking, okay, we're we gonna be able to do this, you know? But they've stepped up and I think they almost feel typical because they've probably seen it on TV or they see, or they, maybe they've been somewhere with their parents. And so they go, hey, we're doing the same thing everybody else is doing. Right. And they kind of think it's cool, I bet, you know? It's so funny, another equalizer, right? It's like, mm -hmm. we always feel exceptional or that all the things we learned in our adult listening session that you two were so helpful with bringing all your guys from, from school and from SA Life. Yeah. We're all, we're, we're, all, we're all wearing masks. We're all stuck at home. We're all living life on Zoom. We all did social, we did a lot of social skills, you know, preparing them to come back and um, you know, and of course it takes, you know, a little bit longer, but I think it made a difference on, on the, on their success coming back, you know, mm -hmm. can you tell me Melissa about Hector? So Hector is, uh, one of our young adults. We did a lot of Twitter challenges 
And so our principal, Robin Fields, would put out each week different Twitter challenges. And so um, Hector was one of our number one <laughs> students in participating. I mean, he did everything from the whip and nay nay to, uh, yeah, he made a poster for um, our IA Appreciation Week to thank Miss Sandra, who's in his class. And I mean, he really just went above and beyond oh. every day and he got his family involved. They were dancing with him in the challenges by the end of it. But um, this was one of the things was to talk about what you learned during um, the distance learning. And so he's talking about how he learned to use Google Classroom, connect on Zoom and hang out um, and how to use Twitter. And so he really stayed connected that way and got his whole family involved. So it was a fun it. thing to see. He really came out of his shell, which was cool. See, and, that, and so those are those, you know, there's, I know this is, uh, you know, COVID has provided some space, right? For us to test our, our, our own, you know, our own steel and learn new things. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I don't know how to use Twitter. I'm like the tweets, the one like, Hector needs to do a tutorial, right? Like Hector's tutorial on how to use Twitter and because it's so cool. And then I can just visualize Hector teaching his mom or his grandma or an aunt how to use Twitter because come on, what's the probability that they know how to do that? I think it's super exciting. And I think that, um, that Melissa, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, can't people, or is that open to the public? Because I'd ask, I'm like, I want to see some of these whips and nanes. And uh -huh. didn't you say people can go to the to the Northside website yeah, or something? So, what um, it's it's under um, at NISD Redix. We retweeted a lot of what the students were doing, so you can okay. kind of follow along with the uh, different social media challenges we had. Okay, perfect. So right here, this this Twittery handle, right? Yeah, that's so that's his personal. Oh yeah, at NISD Redix is yeah. um, they tag us in it, so that way we can retweet it. Okay. So that's perfect. So if you want to see Hector do the whip or the nene, they can go here and see that. That's so exciting. Yeah. I think, um, oh God, there was something else I was going to ask you in that. Um, so is Hector, is, is he one of the guys that um, has, how, like, how, you don't tell me how old, but like, does he have a job? Is he still in the pre-transition? Can you He's, he's doing job that? training right now. Okay. So he, he just started with us. <laughs> Um, and I, that's what I remember, thank you, is that if you go um, on Autism Lifeline Link's website and look at our Facebook Live, um, or go, Autism Lifeline Link's, click our Facebook, right, go to our Facebook, and all of all these videos that we've been doing for over a year, that we do one a month, are there, and there's an amazing one that the Natalie Reddick's team did from the um, Texas Transition Conference, and who knew it was, this was only a month before COVID, right, Melissa? And it is all these amazing um, tools, tricks, free things that you can use with your phone, whether it's communication, mm -hmm. transportation, or other things. So please go and look at our other Facebook Lives. And that was done during the Texas Transition Conference. And I think it's called Don't Put Down the Phone. Because so often <laughs> we're talking about put down the phone, put down the phone. And what Melissa and her principal and one of the teachers did was, um, we, we did a whole Facebook on, oh, what about this? Like, you, if, you, if the phone's going to be there and we all know it is, let's use it for good, right? And so right. did you have something to say else about that, Melissa, or no? Um, no I mean, it's, it's been good that a lot of our students, we try to integrate technology early on. So, you know, it was a little easier for them to connect. Zoom and Facebook, um, not Facebook, Zoom and Google Classroom were a little newer to them but a lot of them uh, already knew how to do video chats and that kind of stuff, so it came a little easier. That's excellent. All right, now I'm gonna bounce back to you, Cindy. Okay. Uh, I know we had to do this because I messed up on the video streaming, yeah. but tell me, I know I've walked around my neighborhood, uh -huh. uh, more in COVID than I ever have, but uh, not as much as my, as my muscles should have, let's just say. <laughs> so, um, Tell us about these rocks and then what you guys did. Yeah, um, it was like our first class and they painted them and, you know, did two or three of them. And then they put like inspirational things on the back and said, you know, um, my student from SLF Academy, um, 
go, and why don't you go and place it somewhere and let someone else find it? And, and, and it was just really cool. And some of, some of the students found other people's rocks too, but we've got some communication on our website that they had found the rocks and all that. So it was fun. It was kind of just kind of getting out in the community and just, it was really fun to watch how that kind of snowballed. And this is kind of a thing, right? And it, it isn't respectfully originated at SA Life Academy, but I do have that question. Like, is that rock there for me to pick up and enjoy? Or is that rock there? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Well, this is a pretty rock. I, I, I am with go, you oh. curious. I'm with yeah. you curious because yeah. I see them and I'm like, uh -huh. you know, is, it, is it like um, Mother Earth when you're out there? Yeah. Nature, <laughs> right? Leave nature as you found it. My mantra to my boys yeah. to this day. Like, Oh, mom, can I take this? I'm like, oh, leave nature as you found it, buddy. Leave nature as you found it. This is a little less naturey because it's been right because it's pretty and you know it's not nature. That's <laughs> right. It's bright orange. And uh -huh. it's they loved it though. Perfectly placed. Yeah, I, I love seeing them, and I don't pick them up, but I do. So I don't know if they're from your team or from anybody else. Yeah. Um, tell me about this. I'm in love oh, the, the fish. fish. That was like in our fundraiser. We were displaying, you know, all of the art types of art that they did, and the fish. I love the fish. They, I think, I think I'm not like I said, I'm not a very good, art, you know, art person, but I think it was sponging. Yeah. And they picked their colors. They did the background first. There's just like steps one through ten of whatever. Let's first pick a background and let it dry. Then they go, let's do this. And so the fish are one of my favorite. We even made cards and um, note cards out of those. Ooh. And yeah, it's fun. And, and we did it with a lot of their artwork, um, the, the blue bonnets and different things and, and we give them away and stuff. So it's kind of fun and they're very proud of that. And on the back, Elaine puts the technique she used to produce oh. that art. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. Um, yeah, thank you. She just gave it to me. I like, you know, the process of how they got about it. They like, for example, the fish, the artists use acrylics to paint a background on the canvas and to blend grass colors on mixed media paper, as well as to make a um, prints from the realistic fish models. And so it tells how she got them to produce that piece of art. That's so. really great because so often like you can see something and it's proprietary information art, you know, and I'm like, no, if you can tell people how this is done, um, a family can be empowered. Right. Again use that technique at home, even even with other family members and to try to do something that's remarkable. Can you tell me about art, uh, art, art? I, I He's mean, really good. Um, he does private lessons with our teacher too, and he is very proud of his. Art loves art. And uh, the art, and he, it's the same blue bonnets. Everyone kind of had a different look on the blue bonnets. It was sponging and just, I just love the colors he used and he was very proud. I, I'm, I'm proud for him. I'm looking at, like you're saying, these these colors on this right one. Uh huh. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Mine would be like I, I'm blob, just, yeah. blob, blob. Mm -hmm. They really, really enjoy it so much. So I was just, I'm, I'm glad that we incorporated that in our in our in our curriculum because it really shows what a person with a disability can do. You know. That's really great, Cindy. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like, and and our guys don't always have exposure to summer camps that are doing these yeah. things or other holiday camps um, because of their intellectual disability. Right. And it's one of those exclusionary things, not, mm -hmm. not, not in, not in evilness, but just out of ignorance. Right. So being able to reintroduce that to them at this transition age and into adulthood, mm -hmm. um, because we all need something by the way, that gives <laughs> us joy <laughs> and gets our brain, right. Gets our brain moving. And so art is a beautiful way to, to do that. And so art or music, we do music too. And, and some people are, you know, like anybody, you know, I mean, I, I'm not an artist, you know, I'm not really a musician either, but, uh, but um, it's, it's fun to see, to watch the adults kind of do what they like the best, you know, and how well they do it. So. All right. I'm going to share one story. So this is from um, our friends at ARC. And uh, I believe Mike or, or Heather sent this over. And so this is Sean. Um, and Sean, you know, I, I get frustrated with puzzles. I'll be clear. I tried during COVID, but I need it done. I need it done. And so Sean, um, what they, with the team, and again, because what's important to remember is that even in COVID, all of our friends at Reddix and in the ISDs and the teachers and the SA Life Academy and at the ARC and at any maybe can and rest, but none of the special special reach, all of our partners, nobody stopped working or providing services. They just had to pivot is the term everyone's using. They had to pivot and 
get smarter and fast about technology and how they were going to provide services. So it's really, I think, important to remind everybody that this has all been done in adversity with short money for nonprofits and ISDs and still with remarkable results. And so it's clear here from this story that, uh, you know, Sean makes a puzzle and Sean's making snacks. Ooh, 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 out of jello. Um, and so he's got all of his ingredients and they had to go back and make a daily calendar for, for, for Sean um, because as I'm saying, life was roped in by breakfast at 8 a.m., lunch at noon and dinner at six and TV from uh, at 11 for him to watch the view. Oh, he likes the view. Um, <laughs> and at 1 p.m. for days of our lives. Oh man, I have to oh, my uh, isn't that excellent? Um, then they had the other hours to walk, exercise, um, do a game, play puzzles, paint, um, some alone time, reading, playing with books, and just to just like his day would be at the ark when he was in Dahab over there. And so um, Again, like, you know, we as, as, as people without disabilities, it's up to us to try to help figure that out. But our population needs a little help to help them figure out what that schedule is and to stay on that routine. So kudos to all of the teachers doing it by Zoom or nonprofit agencies doing it by a Zoom or text or, and of course to the parents or caregivers who have just been champions through all of this. Um, all right, we have a few more stories here. Um, from Melissa. All right. Antonio, tell me about Antonio. That is a handsome picture. So oh, a right. lot of our um, teachers and instructional assistants, they would do parades. So they would go and visit all of the students' houses and honk and um, throw out lays, as you can see around his. Oh, uh, like, I need one. Um, just so they also got to see them in person. Um, and this young man, he actually worked the whole time through um, because he was essential working at HEB. So um, he was still connecting with everybody um, in his phase three class, um, everybody who's working in that kind of stuff. But um, he he had didn't do as much there because he was working a lot. So, but he, it was a way his mom posted this um, to share how special his day was that he got to see all the staff come by. I, that's just so wonderful because, you know, so many people have done like the drive-by birthdays, the drive-by graduations, the drive-by, the teacher drive-bys, right? And so yeah. um, it's just as important to our guys on the spectrum with IDD as it is for any other kid, just, just as special. So I think that's great. And I want to also say the, another shout out to the team at Reddix. Um, and I believe the HEB at um, I-10 and De Zavala, or is De Zavala Heapner? I tend and Days of All is our training site. They, I mean, they, that HEB has been amazing with the team at the Redix and a lot of their guys are the training through there. And so uh, I guess you could see Antonio hanging out at the HEB at Days of All. Um, this typifies and can be one of the things we kind of close out with about um, what life in COVID has looked like and how it looks, again, no different for our neurotypicals than our guys uh, with an intellectual disability or on the spectrum. And that is this all too familiar image of this. Tell mm -hmm. us what is going on and what is Miss Ornelius wearing? So this is one of our, um, our volunteer classes and they would do class meetings daily and they also would do a lunch bunch and so we did a superhero theme for our, um, for one of our um, social media challenges. And so they took it to the class. And so they've all got their superhero theme stuff going on. Um, and that's Miss Brittany's class at Reddick. So they would get on Zoom and everybody's having a good time in their costumes and seeing what everybody else is wearing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just like laughing so, so I'm like of course um, I, I'm not sure what Elizabeth Ornelius is but I'm loving the peacock I don't know what a superhero she created right um, tons of cool t-shirts Terry um, with his Batman signal in the background is that is Terry the is Terry the guy that's helping us out on the streets when the bat signal goes up some hokey, what what's 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 this? This almost looks like a 
Pokemon or Winnie the Pooh. I'm not sure what all the costumes are. <laughs> and look at Leonard. Leonard's happy as anything. I love it. I love it. Um, and who's this? Oh, another HEB -er. That young man got hired during COVID. Oh, cool. Nice. Mm -hmm. See? Success story, success story, success mm -hmm. story. And I think we'll end with this one from um, a parent. This is the father of, um, I'm sorry, dad. Busihi? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't pregame that one. Um, but basically, he sends this letter to the team at Team Ability and how Team Ability has helped bridge the gap and learn new ways to teach at home while doing therapy via telehealth. Um, being at home with the two boys with different needs and they need help with their learning and new ways to keep them engaged with activities to play. Um, going to the center, going to the Team Ability building and center was always fun because um, you can enjoy new sensory experiences. And it is, I told you, it's one of the super cool rooms. And, and the parents can learn from the team ability therapist as well. And so we talked about that a little bit earlier. And they, the, the team always comes up with new and innovative and creative ways. Um, and the, the guys that attend that and the parents really enjoy that time. Uh, but with no school and the kids at home, um, the, again, we talked about caregivers taking on many roles and that that he that he really feels his son needs his team and that how they're always cheering him on. So having that um, having that extra set of people in your life when you have a child with a disability or a young adult with a disability is so very, very important. And we are proud at Autism Lifeline Links to know that we are working every day with um, these 14 electronic referral partners, as well as um, the non-referral electronic referral partners that work in our um, stakeholder community engagement and public policy work groups, like the guys at Team Ability and Nellie Reddix and um, SA Life Academy. And uh, I mean, just countless other people who are working every day to try to support families who are caring for a loved one with a developmental disability um, an intellectual disability or autism spectrum disorder. And so we want to thank all the parents and caregivers out there who are uh, doing a great job. I know it doesn't seem like it, but this too shall pass. But, um, and thank you to all of the people who are helping to try to keep our families and more importantly, our population engaged and stimulated so that they don't lose the valuable skills that you've all taught them over the you know, the past years and the past, you know, year leading up to COVID especially. Um, I don't know if you, either of you have any other parting thoughts or words um, that you'd like to share. Um, and thank you to everybody for sharing their amazing images and stories. I was just gonna say it's, it's been a learning experience for all of us, but a good one. Mm -hmm. I think it makes everybody appreciate your life more and I think the adults are just so happy to be back here with their community and uh, and I think they have a sense of appreciation you know which I think is a something that's that's good for them to understand and experience so I do it's a little more growing up right a little, a little more of that kind of stuff yeah. well thank you so much Cindy and Melissa and um, of course to Barbara and her team over team ability for sharing these um, great stories. And everybody stay Thank safe you. and stay well um, and keep producing art or music or uh, TikToks or dances or workout videos, any of those things that are bringing you joy um, and keeping your brain and body engaged. Be well, thank you. Thank you.